for our final application of derivatives, we're going to consider the problem, estimating the error, right? Approximate a function by its tangent line. It's going to bring in what we call differentials, and we're going to need these when we move to chapter four. So let's look at an example. I'm going to take my function, x cubed, at the point x0 equal to 1. I want to estimate f1.1 using the tangent line and compute the error in that estimate. So what do we have? What do I need for a tangent line? I need a point and a slope. Our point here is just going to be given by evaluating the function at 1. That's going to be 1 cubed, which gives me 1. So my point is 1 comma 1. The slope is going to be given by the derivative of the function evaluated at 1. So we take the derivative of x cubed, get 3x squared, evaluate that at 1, and I get a 3. So 3 is going to be the slope of my line. So I'm looking at y minus y0 equals 3, x minus x0, and then I'm going to push y0 to this side. So our x0 and y0 are 1, 1. So my tangent line is y of x equal to 1 plus 3 times x minus 1. Okay. So if I want to know what's going on at 1.1, I put that in the tangent line equation. That's going to be 1 plus 3 times 0.1, and that's going to give me 1.3. Let's see how bad we are from the actual value. If I put this into a calculator, 1.1 cubed gives me 1.331. So we notice that the difference between this number and this number, the actual value in the tangent line estimate, gives me 0.031. All right, so here's a situation in the real world. You have your tangent line, you have your function, you have no way of figuring out what the actual value is. So how would you go about estimating this error? So what's gonna happen in the real world is you'll be able to get an estimate, you won't have the actual value, but if you know the error in your estimate, you have a good idea at least where it might live. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture a little bit more abstract than this one. I want to be able to write things down. So let's suppose I have my function f. I have a point x0 where I'm taking the tangent line at. And we're going to have a point x1 which is very close to x0. Then the actual error when I measure with the tangent line is going to be f of x1 minus y of x1 in absolute value. So it's just going to be the difference between these two values. And then You'll notice, well, this thing is sort of comparable to the area underneath, this length going from f of x0 to y of x1. Now notice the way I get this leg of the right triangle, well, we have the slope of this line. That's the slope of the tangent line, which is a derivative evaluated at x0. So if I go over by delta x, I'm going to go up by f prime of x0 times delta x. That's because the rise over the run is equal to the slope. So I just push the run to the other side, and that gives me the equation f prime x0 times delta x. So that's what I'm going to call dy. That's going to be our estimated error. Let's take a look. All right, if dy is equal to f prime of x0 times delta x, we go back to our original situation. I'm going to have dy is equal to the slope at x0, which is 3. And then that's going to be times 0.1, which is going to be the difference in the point we're estimating from and the actual point. So that's going to be 0.1. So our dy is going to be equal to 0.3. Now notice our actual error is much smaller than 0.3, but that's fine. This is just an estimate of the error, and what we would want here is that our actual error be smaller than this. And this is definitely smaller than 0.3. So our estimate may not be great, but at least it's an estimate that we can use. We have a definition. y is equal to f of x, differential on an interval. Then dy equal to f prime of x dx is the differential of f of x. If I'm trying to estimate quantities, then dx is going to be the same as delta x, where delta x is just your change in x. Otherwise, this thing is going to be primarily a notational gadget. So for instance, if I push the dx to the other side, we have dy over dx equal to f prime of x, 
And then this is just the two different ways of writing down the derivative. Okay, so on this side, we're looking at what we call Leibniz notation. Let's do a few examples. So we already had f of x equal to x cubed. So in this case, dy is equal to, take the derivative of f, so it's going to be drop the 3 and then take 1 off the exponent. So 3x squared, and then we tack on a dx. All right, for another one, let's let f of x be equal to our x minus 1 over x plus 1. That's our y. So here we're going to have f prime of x given by the quotient rule. So we're going to do derivative of the top, which is 1, times the bottom, minus derivative of the bottom times the top, over t the bottom squared. So it's going to be 2 over x plus 1 squared. My differential is going to be dy equal to f prime of x, which is 2 over x plus 1 squared, times dx. Okay, this will become important in our next section, chapter 4, when we do any derivatives and in integration. So this will come back. Let's get back to estimating errors. All right, so I'm going to have a machine that cuts disks with an error in the radius of 0 0.01 centimeters. I want to estimate the error in the area if a disk is cut with a radius of 10 centimeters. So what things are we trying to get a handle on here? Well, we're told things about radius, and we're trying to find something about area. So by looking at this problem as stated, I'm going to have to find an equation that relates area and radius for a disk. Okay, and also I'll draw a picture, disk, put in the radius, and I'll just give it the name x. So our equation is going to be f of x equal to pi x squared. Normally that would be pi r squared, but we're using x here. And that's what I'm going to call y. So we just follow our nose and see where the differential gets us. So to get the differential, I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to x. So it gives me 2 pi x dx. And then remember, since I'm doing an actual estimation of error here, dx is going to be the same as delta x. So delta x is going to be our error in the radius. So that's given to me as 0.01 centimeters. All right, so that can go in right here as is. Also note, we're given x is equal to 10 centimeters. So that's going to go in there. And then we note, okay, we use our differential to get an estimate for the area, for the error. So I'm going to have 2 pi 10.01, and then that's going to give me 0.628 centimeters squared. And the centimeter squared will come out because dx is a measure in the error of a length, so it has unit centimeter, and x is a length, so that has unit centimeter too. So 0.628 centimeters squared is our estimate for the error in the area. As a final note, while using the differential to estimate error is common practice, it's not entirely justified. Let's take a look at some pictures. So in our good case, let's suppose our function is concave down, increasing. I draw on our tangent line, and then we note the actual error is completely encompassed by the differential. So in this case, we are justified to use the differential to estimate the error. On the other hand, we have this picture, which looks like our picture for x cubed at the beginning. If you notice, say we're increasing in concave up, we draw on the tangent line, and then you note there's no apparent relation between the actual error and the differential. So what's happening here is, if your function's nice and your dx is very small, the hope is that the differential is just going to catch the, the actual error anyway. So in this case, there's a little bit of wishful thinking going on. Not entirely justified, but it's usually going to do the trick.